رسول محمد رسول الله رسول الله You see, we live in a day and age where there is a mad race. There is a mad? What is this race for? This is a race for knowledge. Knowledge is not the monopoly of the Muslim. Even the kafir is in this race. Everyone wants knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. But the difference in the pursuit of the kafir for knowledge and the difference in the pursuit of the mu'min for knowledge is a very different thing. Why? The kafir has one objective with knowledge, only one objective. I'm not talking about the small uh, 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 level people, I'm talking about the people at the top. For the small level people, knowledge has one meaning. What is that? Better job, better career. That's it. Why do you do a master's? Oh, because my boss has said I'll get promoted. Why do you do a PhD? Because there's promotion in my job. Otherwise, would you do uh, extra uh, studies? No, there's no use. If a person is uh, a specialist in uh, uh, chemistry and he spent all his life in chemistry, why would he uh, do a PhD in botany? Why? Because there's no interest. It's not my field. So our knowledge, uh, I'm talking about low level uh, as people, ordinary people, our objective of knowledge is for a better career. And what is the object of the career? Better job, better pay better house, better car, better environment, better luxury, but basically to improve <coughs> our life. We're in this rat race. For, so for people at the bottom like me and you, knowledge is about the rat race and the object of the rat race is more and more and more comfort. But I, I always say, uh, one fakir once said to me, wow. you know the amazing thing with the rat race? You know this great rat race. The amazing thing with this rat race is wherever you are in this race, you're still a rat. <laughs> wherever you are in this race, whether you're up there, whether you're down here, you're still a rat. Why? Because it's a rat race. Anyway, for people like me and you, the object of knowledge is promotion, stability, security. I am this, I am this, I am this. So it gives us security, it gives us this stability. But for people at the top who govern, govern, I suppose it's a good way of looking at it. You have two groups of people, the have and the have nots. <laughs> we are the have nots. The have nots, we pursue knowledge what, for what? So that we can have. And there are those who have. And why do they pursue knowledge? Then objective of knowledge is one word. And that word is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is? Power. Why? All these nuclear secrets, what is it all about? Power. All these official secrets that government hide from us, what is it all about? Power. But power is not a bad thing, is it? I have knowledge, I have power, but power is good. So isn't this objective good? The problem is, even the Western thinkers accept that power corrupts. And absolute power absolutely corrupts. <laughs> when a person has power, who is there to say that he will not abuse his power? Hitler had power. Stalin had power. Mussolini had power. But what guarantee was there that that abuse would not take place? There is no guarantee. Why? Everyone says, I will guarantee, I will guarantee, I will guarantee. I will guarantee. These are fake promises. Why? Because man is prone to corruption. And the more power he has, the more prone to corruption he is. So the objective of knowledge for the have and have nots in the West is very simple. Two words for the have nots like me and you. What is the objective of knowledge? Progression. What is the objective of knowledge for the haves? Power.
वेरी सिंपल बात समझ आ रही है ना सब इंग्लिश The problem is the gear ratio between English and Urdu is so much. It's like going from fifth gear to first gear. I mean, Urdu and Punjabi is like going from fourth to fifth. The ratio is very simple. But the problem with uh, 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 Urdu and English is it's totally gear changing. Don't check the difference. So I, I will try to uh, interject with Urdu, but I hope you follow me. But in the Quran and Sunnah, the pursuit of knowledge is also a race, Allah. is also a pursuit, but the objective is different. The Prophet you've heard all these hadiths, I don't intend to uh, repeat all these hadiths. Seek knowledge from your cradle to your The problem is for us, knowledge is, what is knowledge? Knowledge is uh, 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 knowledge of dunya, the alim will tell you, I have knowledge, come to me, study from me. And if you study six years, seven years, I'll give you a degree and that's it, finished. You graduated. This word graduation is a very poisonous word. There is no such a thing as graduation in Islam. You know, uh, this word, graduation is against hadith. A moment never graduates. Why min al-mahdi il and even in his grave, he doesn't graduate. Why? Because Al Hakumut Takasur, Hatta Zurtumul Makabir, Kalla Sofa Talamun, Tumma Kalla Sofa Talamun, Bafi Ilam Jari. Anyway, uh, the knowledge of the grave is something else. Uh, that's another subject for another day. Today, I want to talk about the object of knowledge as far as the Quran and Sunnah is concerned. What is the object of knowledge? I think. You see, there is one knowledge which Shah Waliullah Muhaddis Dehli says is the knowledge of the Zahir, of the external. Do this, do this, don't do this, do this, don't do this. Laws, knowledge, this is this, this is this. The sky is blue, the sky is dark, the sea is this, the sea. All this is factual knowledge. This is Ilme Zahiri. Ilme Zahiri. But Islam and the Quran and Sunnah are not limited to ilm zahiri. There is another knowledge, and that is called ilm batani, the knowledge of the inner. Now, the knowledge of the, the knowledge of the inner. How do you obtain this knowledge? You see, because science is very jealous. Science is very greedy. If science cannot understand anything. Science rejects it. That's what we've been taught at school. Evaluate something. If you can understand it with your akal, accept it. If you can't, reject it. This is the philosophy of the West today. Why? The mahal, the location of truth, to determine the truth of something, the location of determining the truth of something is the intellect. Ah, Akal. Ah. I often say in my speeches in South Africa, in Africa that there is a new false god that is born in the world today. First we had Firon, Haman, uh, 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 Namrud. Uh, we had all these gods, all these statues, they were easy. But the God of today, the false God of today is the most difficult God to deal with. Why? The false God. The most difficult false God of today. Do you know what the name of that false God is? 